Chronic is in the building. Hello, no, she was Ed. 30 when she did yeah. that. Hamster. Where did you hey, find Chronic. where did you find this this redheaded British chick? <laughs> I like redheads. So. I know that. Yeah. Yeah, it was just an advert I responded to. An advert. Red, yeah. Internalized misogyny redhead sort. Oh, cool. Oh mm -hmm. man. Well, I got a question because you said you you. I thought it was hilarious. You don't prefer men that make a lot of money, so mm -hmm. it kind of hurt my feelings there. Can you can you dive into that? Um. So he's uh, like a younger, so rich version. It's, I had an experience um, when I wanted to exit a relationship and um, a lack of financial independence was a barrier. So, so, just, so you, know, a you, personal so you weren't making a lot of money is what you're saying, right? I wasn't. So that's not, that has nothing to do with how much money the man makes. It's how much money you make. Uh, it, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It just was, wanted to clear that up. And you know, the, the, obviously, you know, there was, it was a relationship and it was complex. Um, but, but yeah, but then, you know, on the other hand, it's like, if I if I'm earning you know an amount that I can be sort of financially independent but then I was to get with a man and have kids and he's earning a lot of money so we're living in a really nice area and the kids are going to a school in a really nice area and all of that like you know what would I do go and live like miles away because that's all I could afford you know what I mean yeah well like I would I would say more. that if you marry somebody, you should not even plan for the potential for divorce when you have kids. No, yeah, I, I think that is true, to be fair. I think a lot of women, especially when they, I don't know, you look like you're in your 20s, right? I'm 34. You're 34? Are you shitting me? Yeah, she looks pretty good for 34. Oh my, especially hamster. This, this woman's drinking the blood of virgins every night. Apparently. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I think a lot of women, when they they get older, were more refined. They they kind of appreciate. Oh man, I wish I had a man that kind of took care of everything. Because uh, going to work every day, working in a corporate office, I'm not sure what you do. It's kind of soul crushing, right? Especially if you do want a family, which I'm not sure what your position yeah. on that is, having a family or not. If you don't want to have a family. And you enjoy working, and I'll just say, like living the life of a man. All the props to you. Uh, enjoy it. Um, yeah, I, I have two sons mm -hmm. already, um, and so I I I don't need to have more children. But if I loved a man and he wanted them, then I would have them. Um, and there would be, you know, at least the breastfeeding kind of period that I would, that it would be an absolute pain in the ass to do anything that was not staying at home mm -hmm. to do that. So um, I don't want to, if you don't want to discuss it, you don't have to, but what happened to the father of your children? Why did that relationship not work out? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, obviously I am not gonna, go into significant detail about that um, in public because uh, we do have kids. But, mm -hmm. you know, I suppose I was 19 and I didn't know what I needed. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I, I was with him for 12 years mm -hmm. uh, and did put effort into trying to make it work. Um, and eventually accepted that it was not going to. Hmm. Well, I'm guess I'm going to assume there was no abuse, and it is just kind of a mutual decision to break up. Then, right? Uh, <laughs> that sort of specifically why and those kind of questions are more detailed than I would give in public. Okay. So I, I my would kids to find yeah. out in YouTube video details like that. Mm -hmm. So I think there's two things at play here. One is 
what what the role of women in society is and should be because right now it's whatever the woman wants right like if you want to train to be a high level professional gung ho take affirmative action who cares if you want to just find a man and have a family and stay at home you can still do that the second mm-hmm. option is a sexual freedom yeah. right so women get to choose their own sexual partners and i'm just let's just say let's not talk about you let's talk about some other woman i gave this guy kids we married he beat me he did this this and this when i hear women tell me that i hear i was attracted to abusive men and i think mm-hmm. what a shame that this woman had the sexual freedom to give her body and children to an abusive man would it not be more merciful if a father figure chose her husband instead of her running off with some guy that's going to abuse her and make her a single mother yeah well i mean you know you will find that it is specifically fatherless girls who make particularly bad mating decisions Mm -hmm. Mm. um you know although sweaty fat guys misses just ignored the dad that she did have given her good advice so there is that as well well she's the second wife the first one was the single mom wife Mm. single mom kid and her Mm. dad left when she was 12 that chick was living hell for eight years (laughs) i mean i would say if you're not planning to have children and a more traditional home life you should not get married period because that's the point there's no reason to marry a, a woman just because you love them. You just love them and you don't want kids, keep her as a girlfriend. She's not giving you kids. She's not fulfilling the role of a wife. She she doesn't need a rank. And I agree with that after my second wife. And like and basically the, the only reason we got married is because I got health care. She needed to get some stuff done, so we got married so that she could get some health care. Yeah. So and don't and ever do that. A lot of the people I talk to are young men, men under 30, I would say. And mm-hmm. for them, I'm like, if you want to get married and have children and have a family, don't give time of day to non-virgin women. Non-virgin women are not deserving of marriage and children. Now I say that there are instances where there are non-virgin women that do get married and have kids and there's no problems and it's a healthy family. Yo-ho. But Mm -hmm. you look at the statistics, if a virgin woman gets married, she only has an 18% chance to get divorced. If that woman had one previous sexual partner besides her husband, it jumps up to like 40%. Yeah, yeah. I have have seen that research and actually Bettina Arndt did um, quite a good analysis of it and she found it not entirely as reliable as it purports to be. Um, I, I would say that it is. What were her reasons? Something. Gosh, you know, it was. Probably had to do with the fact that virgin wives are more likely to be religious, right? Uh, well, no, I mean, that was part of the original research, I believe. Um, and it's certainly what you would assume, but no, uh, her main sort of part was, um, about age actually. Mm -hmm. Um, and the fact that actually at all ages you know 30s 40s right up to 80s there are couples meeting and enjoying very healthy relationships together and obviously you know when someone is getting into the second half of their lives the likelihood that they're a virgin is very small and actually you know if they are then there may well be some kind of psychological issues that are going to be a handful to deal with well, past um, 35, you're not having kids anyway, but, but without huge risks. I mean, yeah, I, I, I'd i say that something, you know, an indicator like that would be something to bear in mind. Yeah. So you're saying, not, uh, I guess what you're saying is like, it's more important how, how old they are versus the virginity status? No, no, no. What I'm saying is that that, that would be to some degree a reassurance but i wouldn't absolutely you know go she's a virgin she'll do yeah no it's it's it's, it's just one it's just one i wouldn't necessarily completely discount yeah it's just one trait 
right? It's just one trait. And I talk about that one trait because that research is pretty much looking at that one trait. I'm sure if we can measure submissiveness, there would be a correlation there too. You know, maybe if there if there was some weird stat that if she had her left tonsil taken out, but she has her right tonsil and it reduces divorce rates by 80%, I'd be like, take your chick to the doctor, look at her tonsils. So it's not a end all be all, because even if 100 dudes marry 100 virgins, 18 of them are going to get divorced. It's just when you give advice to large groups of men, right? I say, no, I'm in no diamond, because if all of them listen to that, <laughs> We're going to reduce the amount of family <laughs> court right. slaughter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, let, I mean, let me tell you from firsthand experience, the man mm-hmm. gets absolutely destroyed in the United States in a divorce. Absolutely destroyed. Well, I was indentured to the secondhand first experience for, for you, years. right? That's secondhand because you lost both well, hands in the courts. Two well, times. the first the first one indentured me for fifteen years, uh twenty two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in child support alone just absolutely destroyed me financially. I lived in my car on active duty for four years. Okay. The second one lied, uh, falsely accused me, and I sat in jail for 15 days. But I only got out of that with only having to pay her boyfriend $3,000. They said Mm -hmm. I cut up his truck. So, So, yeah, I mean, you're you're guilty if you're a guy. Yeah, that's why I'm telling you. What's what's quite interesting, though, I, I... Um, I don't know whether it's the same in the States, but with regards to the UK, uh, I don't know if any of you are aware of the, um, the empathy gap. It's, it's a blog, um, empathygap.uk or something like that, um, which is run by William Collins. That's his pen name. And he published an excellent like tome, um, called the empathy gap mechanisms of male disadvantage and neglect or something like that um but he's like um he's very male brained and he is retired now and spends his time pouring through um studies that are published and you know that book is specifically about um the evidence on sex differences in you know treatment and opportunities and choices and rights and all of that Uh, although he branches off into kind of like covid and other kind of areas as well Um, but what he found looking at the evidence from family courts was actually not that um, women are preferentially treated in family court, but that what is favored is the status quo. So, you know, if like a woman leaves and the kids are with the man and she goes to court to get access and he's like, they're here and they're fine, the judge is likely to say, just leave them then. And so the reason that that doesn't happen is because women, you know, keep the kids and then deny the access there's not actually there's not the discrimination in court based on sex it's specifically that women after they separate are much more likely to be malicious bitches who won't put the needs of their children first but you know if a man wants to do that he is able you know and if his ex is that is that in britain a good woman who does want to her who is at a disadvantage the system is um the system rewards the people who are the least scrupulous is and that the way it the works in britain statistics and the statistics clearly show that the people who are the most unscrupulous and who are not putting their children's needs first are typically women and that kind of troubles me. That troubles me even more than the idea that it's you know discrimination at the court level. Well, it's, it could be a little bit of both. I mean, when it comes to the criminal court in the UK and every Western country, men serve much more time for the same crimes compared to women. So that's yeah, kind yeah. of you know. So like, I would just assume it's that kind of. Um, you know, what is it? What, what wonderful women, all women are wonderful effect, whatever it's called, kind of goes everywhere. But 
it's it's the West is a landmine, right? For for marriage and families, because you're saying earlier, all it takes is a couple female friends being like, "Your man ain't shit." You should yeah. go live the single life, live the whole life. You get groups of like five divorced women telling the one woman who's still married to get divorced just because, you know, it's, it's kind of insidious, it's you know, it's, insane. yeah, well, it's, it's insidious because I see like stuff mm -hmm. like that happen all the time. And I yeah. think, can women ever really have friends, like honest friends? I'm sure there are, and I've known a couple, but when you yeah. get these friend groups of, um, pickering birds, they're, they're not they're not doing stuff to make the the friend's life better they're doing stuff to make themselves feel better they're crabs in a bucket and they're dragging they're other in women into the bucket if, if all the women they know make shitty choices then they're not so bad but if there's one who's doing the right thing and uh, she's got her life together then that puts everyone else in a harsh light doesn't it yeah i think i'll have my wife be friends with the grannies at the knitting group from the church I'm not, I don't think that grannies are going to be telling her to hoe out. <laughs> well, not in the next 20 years. Well, not until you know, yeah. 20 years from now. Yeah. Well, those kind of, they're those, all going to be tatted up. Those, those kind of women don't end up going to church knitting groups. They, uh, they, they march in the streets and, you know, cry into wine bottles, I guess. Boxed wine in Catland. <laughs> but, uh, the culture of the West is so so feminist but more so like anti-family these fertility rates mm -hmm. are just crashing it's so bad that we have first generation immigrants coming i know it happens in the uk too right so mm -hmm. a couple from pakistan or a couple from yemen or wherever the middle east comes to the uk they got like eight kids like, Woo! all the bankers are cheering more more mm -hmm. consumers uh, economy's going to grow more control but then those kids those eight kids will have the same fertility rates as native Britons. They'll have like maybe one, maybe two each, maybe. They're culturally British, right? And that means they're culturally feminists and it's just a cluster. Yeah, because they're now growing up in the system that's been destroying the rest of us. Mm. So they're stuck with all the laws, they're stuck with all the societal or uh, Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, no, I mean, it's it's a global problem. What have we got? We've got Nigeria that's still growing, but everyone else, birth rates are declining precipitously. And the, the Western countries take the smartest, typically the smartest and the brightest from all these other countries, and then convinces them not to have a lot of kids. <laughs> so we're, um, we're destroying the genetics of everything. Yeah. So I always think, like, how do I get a woman to the U.S. and keep her away from the feminist poison? I need to find a, Make I need sure to find she a doesn't speak English. Well, I'll say you need to find a woman that's not going to go on social media. Social media is literally run by my enemies, the enemies of family, the enemies of the church, and they want to destroy those families. So I don't want her on social media, really. Yeah, yeah, but social media is also, you know, the avenue where you find dissent in voices. But what what's the so point of having my wife on social media? media? Or like mainstream media. But why would I want my wife on social media? Like, what does the family get for her being exposed to the algorithms of you know, hot wife summer? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, that sounds like you're talking about quite a vacuous woman. Um, but there's there's smart yeah, women I, that fall into algorithm traps. I mean, it happens all the time. It's just if the only yeah, benefit, there's, there's, a lot, the ben there's a lot of good the benefit is like entertainment, that. right? So it's like my wife's not going to be leading political groups. She doesn't need to hear dissenting voice against whatever movement, or whatever. You not no. You see, I think that um, that's actually very important. Um, I I think that in the cultural climate, you know. You, you go out and you are assaulted by like all of these adverts with misinformation. You have all these misinformed people who you will bump into and will say ludicrous things. And so I think that I would want a partner of any sex who is engaging with content that challenges them to um, see clearly. To think about it, yeah. 
I mean, maybe the compromise is I, I curate who she listens to, but stuff like TikTok, you get no curation on that. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to sort of either partner to be curating, but I would want both partners to have similar interests and to be able to be like sharing information with each other that is important for leading good moral lives. The problem is women are much more susceptible to propaganda and manipulation when they see other women telling them something. So the freedom to go onto TikTok is the freedom to see tons of women that you'll never actually see in person who don't care about you telling you here are 10 reasons why if your husband does this, he's abusive. So at the end of the day, and I'm not trying to insult, yeah, yeah, I'm not trying to yeah, insult yeah. you, but I don't need a woman's political opinions. I need her to submit to me and listen to me. She can argue with me. She can give me her opinion. But the, the potential intellectual growth you can get on social media right now compared to the absolute poisoning of her brain, in my assessment, that's not a good trade. It's not worth it. I, I would not, I would not be, me. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not a fella, but I mean, I wouldn't be attracted to someone who was susceptible to being taken in by ludicrous propaganda. I would want someone who was reasonably certain of their morals. Mm. Well, that's what the guys are. Women are susceptible to conformity. Yeah, yeah. They want to well, fit I in. Do, I do. I do think that that is a danger for women. Yeah, and weak males, they want to conform too. They care about who you likes know, them. But there's a difference between having... Um, a vulnerability and being aware of it and being committed to um not falling into that trap and ensuring that you are having meaningful conversations you know and, and your husband or whatever and it should be for a woman an invaluable resource on I checking see, I yourself. see social I see social media like a strip club for women, right? Or even worse, like a massage parlor. If I sent my wife to a massage parlor with a bunch of beautiful Asian women to get a massage, I'm not concerned. It's, you know, what but but if I'm going to these massage parlors three times a week and when I come home I look dehydrated and sleepy, there's a problem going on. Right. So well, like different yeah, environments, I, I could go to the massage yeah, parlor I mean, on TikTok. I'm with you. You know, there's an issue, but YouTube, you like stuff like YouTube's a bit different. Um, when I really talk about social media, I'm talking about TikTok, Instagram, whatever, because okay, like you can well, always yeah, subscribe I mean, to podcasts and be like, okay, let's, we'll watch this podcast together. But at the end yeah. of the day, it's like, would I rather have me and my wife listen to a podcast from some random on YouTube? Or do we want to listen to like an audio book of some classical plays? Do we want to go for a hunt? Like, is there so many better things you could do with your time than to listen to a podcast or such? But I think the big difference is in my wife's situation, she's not going to work. She's not talking to feminists. She's not watching like TV or whatever with these stupid advertisements. Her main focus is on the family and the home. So there's, and if, as long as you can limit the poison from the Western cultural poison coming into the house, you got a good chance. But if she's on her phone and she can watch TikToks, it's like a, that's like a, that's a giant snake thing at any point. You just get her right in the heart. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but surely you would want to have, like, because it, it, you're sort of giving me the impression that you're sort of going to bring in some woman and then say, by the way, you know, this is a, the boundary. You're not on social media. Oh, no, I'll, tell, I'll tell her straight up. I, Fair I, enough. But I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, like, try to jump all your values on a woman before you marry her and give her kids. Like after the fact, that's not, that's, you don't know what's going to happen. That might end up in a divorce. 
I'd much rather find a woman saying, yes, I will submit, period. And I'm like, so what if that means I don't like your friend, you stop hanging out with them, they go, yes. That's what I want to hear before she gets the ring. I'm not going <laughs> to just fall in love with a physical form and then be like, oh, by the way, you're going to have to grow out your hair and live at the top of this tower and uh, chill. That's all. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell girls up front how I am and what I expect. You know, if we have one date and then she wants another one, that's when she finds out. Yeah. You know, and yeah. the girl that I told you about that uh, liked the strong hands guy, right? Mm -hmm. She wanted somebody with rough hands. Mm -hmm. She was like that. Um, I told her straight up. I was like, you're never going to hear me uh, tell you I care about you, love you, anything like that. You're never getting a ring, nothing. You know, if I'm with you, that means I like you. That should be enough. And for four years, she was good with it. And we're still friends today. I mean, she's pretty awesome. She makes a lot more money than I do. So I kind of get your point about, you know, making money. She She's just fine whether she's with me or anybody else. So that's not a problem. And I like that about her. I mean, she took me to Vegas yeah. to go to this big car thing called SEMA. I mean, she paid for the whole trip. And I was like, well, thanks. Yeah. So, you know, that was kind of nice. Mean, First time yeah. a girl ever did anything like that for me. Yeah. And I, I think, um, I think it's like, maybe it's to do with, um, introversion. Like I, I don't like having like inane conversations and like wasting my time. If like, you know, socializing is effort and it's going to leave me tired, then I want it to be meaningful when I do it. Um, but yeah, I, I do believe in. Uh, establishing what you're aiming for as soon as possible but also you know from a dating advice perspective my experience is that men who express their expectations at the beginning that that's a masculine approach that's uh, you know it, yeah, it's, it, it's women perceive that as masculine and so that is I think I mean, for me, and I don't think, I don't know, maybe I, I am different. I don't know. It's a masculine but, approach for sure. But yeah. I think yeah. the it's, reason it's why I do it, more masculine than me, the reason probably. why I do it isn't because I think I'm going to get more dates by doing it. It's just, I don't want to waste no. time with women that are useless to me, to be quite frank. Yeah. And I don't want to waste their time. Like, um, mm -hmm. I was dating this one chick and she was very attractive she was early 20s. She was 19, actually. Beautiful, exotic looking. Uh, I wanted everything I wanted except children. She's so upset when I broke up with her. And I'm like, I, I don't want to waste your time. I could lie to you and have a lot of fun sex with you. But I am wasting your time. Because in 10 years, your selection of men is going to be vastly reduced than when you're 19. So find a guy that's cool with not having kids. Have a good life. That, that's a very honorable course of action. That's the same way I am. Just, I ain't having no more kids. So if I meet a girl and she's young and she can mm -hmm. still have kids and she wants them, I'm like, well, you can have some fun with me, but it, it ain't going nowhere because I'm not having any more kids because I'm not mm -hmm. having anybody have that power over me again where they can just like take all of my money away and leave me living in my car. It just isn't going to happen. Because I'm not a MGTOW. I hang out with them because we agree on a lot of things. <laughs> but I'm not a MGTOW. Don't worry. I get called MGTOW all the time, man. It's, it's funny. But, yeah. Um, you and me have a lot of the same ideas, Chronic. Except, you just have you know, more uh, learned experience, which includes yeah. a family court judge branding you with his initials <laughs> on your booty. And having the second wife be a virgin when I met her. How old was she? She was 21. And then she went nuts because all of her family and friends were. Yeah. They're like, have you seen Lord of the Rings? Well, the other part of it is um, I was uh, helping her dad out. I painted some parts and I used the same mask twice. And when you do that with clear coat, you end up inhaling all the isocyanates and stuff. It doesn't filter. And it messed up my lungs for six months. So I couldn't breathe. I couldn't hardly walk. 
you, got uh, sick. you know, I could, yeah, you know, I, I could ten walk ten feet to take a leak, and I, I was just winded, like I just ran two marathons. Now I know that you know. I know that when men get sick, it increases the chance of their wife leaving. But I oh, also yeah. know that 100%. if a woman gets sick, so let's say if a man gets sick, there's like a, I think it was like 30% chance increase. Let's just say it's a three times increase. But when a woman gets sick, it's like a 12 times increase. The man will leave. I don't have that study on hand, but I thought it was very interesting. I guess it's like, I don't know, older ladies, they get sick and the husbands are just like, I've got to find some more old lady puñiti yeah. or I don't know what the... I can't explain that, that to be honest. That and this is also from personal experience, although it wasn't my kid. Um, the Arab girl I was engaged to 30 years ago, she had her second kid when she was 34 or 35. Ooh. And he, yeah, he came out um, basically like a two year old. He's a six foot two, two year old, you know, and he lives in Germany. They live in Germany. It's unfortunate. He's, yeah, he's a uh, invalid of the state. Yeah, you know, it's an, it's unfortunate and, the amount of lying that society yeah. does to women about fertility, right? But her husband bailed on her and started cheating and stuff. He just, you know, once the kid come out and he wasn't right, you know, he just like shut her off. He's like, I don't even want to touch her. He, I mean, he chose a he chose a thirty four year old woman to have kids with. Well, she was thirty one when he met her. Still, right? So, yeah. like a thirty one year old having kids is going to have, it's not that much of a chance. It's not like, I think it's barely even, yeah. it doesn't even get to a percent, but it's still like 10 times the likelihood than if a 20 year old has kids to have these kind of defects. Yep. But uh, if yeah, he chose, he chose that woman to have kids, kids with, and then he had an invalid son and then he ran off and started cheating. Um, yeah. That guy's an asshole. Yeah, I, I agree. And she, you know, her and I are still friends and it's been 30, 32 years since I've seen her. Last time I saw her was 1991. You know, but we talk online and stuff. So we, we've been through a whole lot together. And, you know, it, it's good to have friends in other places. And I think if I would have actually been able to marry her back in 1991, I would have never got divorced and none of you would know me. <clears throat> Arab girls are totally different. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're different good. depending on what country you go to, yes. Yeah. Well, Some she, of them can be just as bad as Westerners. Kenya. Yeah, she grew up in Kenya and lived in Dubai. Her parents are Omani and Yemeni, and they loved me, you know. And it was just like a big mix-up why I didn't get to marry her back in 91. So I met her right before the war kicked off. It, it's a whole long kind of cool story. but And then it's just been a little world of shit ever since. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't get good. We didn't get cheap oil from all those wars. Useless. No, we had this big war, and all we got was expensive gas. Should have just. I think Saddam Hussein guaranteed um, Bush. He's like, if you let us take, uh, if you let us take Kuwait, I guarantee you, as long as I'm alive, you'll have one hundred dollar barrel gasoline. Imagine that. We'd have people having gasoline fights at the gas at the pumps, right? Yep. <sighs> But that's not as bad as the worst betrayal. The worst betrayal of the U.S. through foreign policy was um, Kissinger was in China talking to Mao. Yeah. And Mao, but I guess there was some some kind of communist uh, fascination or obsession about reducing the population. They were saying they were having too many kids, which whatever, one-child policy. Yeah, the but one Ma child. Yeah, Mao offered but, Henry Kissinger. He's like, hey, how about you just take a million Chinese women under the age of 30? And Kissinger laughed. But Mao was like, no, I'm serious, man. Take them. Can you imagine how how yep. much feminism would have been slowed down if a million Chinese women, if you flooded the the Puniti market in the U.S. Cause, oh yeah, because for that every many more women, Jesus. every Western woman, every white woman is like, I want to chase my career and degree. I'll give you kids when I'm 34 or whatever. It's like you look at her, then you look at the 21 year old Chinese woman who's just like desperate for a husband. It's like that's an easy choice. No, I think the uh, thing with China goes back to the Eisenhower administration because they lied to it was either Eisenhower or Truman, and that's how Mao got in power and they became a communist country because before that, it was Chiang Kai-shek, and they uh, pushed him off and sent him to Taiwan. Yeah, I think, what it, I, think, I think the primary thing is... Uh... Uh, Chinks, whatever the the nationalist guy, he got his army got bodied by the Japanese, 
and Maus was just chilling in the mountains because that's how they rolled. Yeah. But also, uh, the U.S. kind of like hung him out to dry because they were lying to our president. It was either Eisenhower or Truman. I, I want to say Eisenhower. But it could have been Truman. I mean, the U.S. likes wasting war and blood, money, and treasure on uh, yeah. conflicts that should have no, no reason to be there. Right. Well, we like to get into great blunders, you know, never get involved in a land war in Asia, and we've done it how many times It's now? like, you know how rich we could have been if we just sold the Japanese oil? <laughs> Do you know how well off I'd be if I'd never gotten married? <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. yeah, it's very, very comparable. Very comparable. Exactly. Anyhow, um, anti-fembot, good luck with everything. Good luck to you and your children, your sons, and I'll, I'll talk to you guys later. Later, Chronic. Good talking to you again, man.